Hello again. In this presentation, we're going to study some of the main important or main aspects of alkaline fuel cells. We will have a look at the main features and also some components and configurations used in AFC. Well, alkaline fuel cells use an electrolyte consisting of a potassium hydroxide uh, solution which is highly concentrated, usually 100 concentrated. But they can also use another alkaline solutions, other um, kind of materials, but the most common is potassium hydroxide. Um, and then in this case the charge is uh, transferred from the cathode to the anode, it's a negative charge and it will be this hydroxyl anion. So these are the main characteristics of AFC. Uh, as we mentioned before, the electrolyte is the, what consists of a potassium hydroxide solution, which will be in movement, by the way, which will, may be uh, moving. And the working temperature of these fuel cells um, is still quite low. It ranges from 65 to 200 degrees, which is still quite low compared to other fuel cells. Again, a chance transfer will be carried out by this uh, anion, by the hydroxyl, and it still requires um, a very, very pure hydrogen stream for its use at the anode. Mm? So we have to deal with some problems related to evaporation of water, um, and again, because we use very low temperatures, we will need to use very pure, well, very um, expensive catalysts like platinum materials. Well, these are the power range and charge density usually applied in this kind of systems. Um, these are very old fuel cells. The first one to be applied in special programs, in the NASA and Apollo programs, so they were very famous. And the most used catalysts are platinum, palladium or nickel at the anode. And we can even use gold or platinum or silver and catalyst at the cathode. So these are well the reasons why these fuel cells will be very expensive still. So let's have a look at the positive characteristics of AFC. Um, because we work in, in basic conditions, we will have very high yields, uh, especially on the oxidation at the anode, very high yields. And we will be able to use the different uh, electrocatalysts, so we'll have a very high uh, flexibility in our operation, which is quite good because we will be able to change things and trying to increase the efficiency. Mm? They are still working at very low temperatures, so it's good because we will be able still to use mm, not very expensive materials, not very resistant materials. This is positive as well, and the design will be very compact. We'll see later on that these were the first fuel cells used in the special programs. We still have some drawbacks. So I mentioned before, we'll have to, uh, we'll be required to use very pure hydrogen in the anode um, because the catalysts that we will use are very sensitive to poisoning. So this is, this is negative. Mm? Again, the temperature is not low enough to avoid problems used when we're trying to use these systems in portable applications. So maybe proton exchange membrane sphere cells are more suitable for this kind of application. No. It's something that could be discussed. The most important, um, these systems uh, require that the electrolyte is probably going to be lost because we say that it's the, a solution, not a solid. And then we will probably have, or we'll probably need to have a system to recover this electrolyte which will be lost. So this is an important drawback. In general terms, as the most, well, as the most of the fuel cells, the, pre the increase, increases in pressure and the temperature improve the operation of this kind of fuel cells. So it's good if we can um, pressurize the hydrogen and the oxygen before we use it and also if we work at high temperatures. Well these are some examples of uh, alkaline fuel cells which have been already used. Again I think this is the one that was used uh, for the NASA in one of the, of the programs. And 
Uh, it's been also used in commercial vehicles for uh, mobile or public services and in low power generation plants. Okay. Well, as a conclusion, I think alkaline fuel, fuel cells are, like in the first fuel cells, to be commercialized, well, to be used in practical applications, especially for the NASA, in, well, their uh, special programs, even in the 60s. And they show very good electrochemical yields, especially in the oxidation, but we still have a lot of problems related to the fact that the temperature is quite high, not so high as in other applications, but, and because the electrolyte may be lost, because it won't be a solid, it will be liquid. So, thank you very much for your attention, I really hope you enjoyed this one, and hope to see you again in other models of this course.